Hey everybody, Tim Kelly here. Welcome back to my regular camera room uh, with my larger light sources and larger power, power lights that we use. Today, however, I'm gonna spend a few minutes and just tell you a little bit about my backgrounds, what they are, why I choose them, and show you a little bit of the mechanics of how I store them, etc. So thanks for being with us today. Let's get started. Of course, we do a lot of our shooting on muslin backgrounds, and we keep probably a good dozen on hand. Probably a half a dozen get used regularly. That's why they're up tight and uh, up high and messy, because they get grabbed and used a lot. But what I want to show you also is how we use it, and that is back here on our background area. This is a nice muslin. It's 9 by 12. And what we do is clip it up to an existing canvas. Not everybody can do it this way, but if you have a background system, it's just a matter of clipping it up. But I'm gonna show you some other tricks here today. This one is by David Mayhew, is a tan gold plaster. And I really like it for seniors and a few other things. So this is the controls for all our canvases and we just tie them into that. So our backgrounds really are just clipped to the dowels of some bigger backgrounds and we'll get ready for the next one. Let's change a background. I'll have uh, my assistant Curtis help me. We'll fold this one up just the way we do every day. Now of course if you don't have a motorized or a crank system for your canvases you may just have to put up a uh, a background stand system which is nothing more than two stands and a crossbar and you'll use a lot of clamps to get these things nice and tight but we do this this is pretty efficient to just clip muslins to backgrounds that are already up so sometimes we'll have four and five backgrounds deep set up and ready to go and we just unclip them to reveal the next one so let's let's fold this up here curtis we'll get this one put away the way we do and usually we fold it so that the color shows when it's on the uh, on the shelf rather than fold it up back backwards all right that way we know what design it is when we look at it on the shelf Boom. there we go we'll put that one up and I'll grab another So we'll put another favorite up. This is called Kelly Cool. It's also from Mayhew. So let's put this one up. Let's get the right, right side out. Let's see what we got here. A lot of these muslins have two sides, but I always have a favorite. <clears throat> let's see what we got. Okay. So this is a really nice muslin, but you know, some of them, if you don't use them often, they will have wrinkles in them. Uh, some are very obvious. Uh, clamps and clips and bungees work really well. And if you have sidebars, if you have a stand system with a crossbar, you can clamp the sides. Or if you have a floor piece down and you have little kids that would tend to run around and cause it to kind of mess up, um, just use weights. If you don't have weight lifters weights, these are actually my little tabletop microphone stand weights, which on Amazon cost about $7.95. And I think they probably only weigh, they're way under five pounds. But by placing them, uh, one at each end down here, we can keep this thing pulled a little tight. I'll have one down here. This will help it to be, to remain right where I put it. I often myself purchase two matched backgrounds at the same time. One, so again, we're not dealing with a 20 footer, but also you have the small version of it if you're just doing headshots. I'll show you a good example here next. I'm gonna reveal the next background under there. Hopefully you find that helpful. <laughs> 
But again, we keep the design side out so we know what we've got on the shelf. So now we're going to put this background up out of the way. Classic garden. So this is our Kelly Beige, the favorite of so many people and myself. Uh, I use it probably for 40 to 50% of my photography. It's a very, very popular background. It looks great in color, looks great in black and white. And you know, it's also good about having a medium tone background like this is it's so easy to make it a little lighter or to make it a lot darker. If you have a dark background, it's almost impossible to make it medium or medium light, but making a medium one darker is very easy. So we're gonna put the floor piece on and show you how we would deal with a full length set. The piece that's on the wall matches this other piece, ordered the same time, same size. We're simply gonna lay it on the floor to create what appears to be a 12 by 20 background, but it's really two nine by 12s. Sometimes it's wise, if it's a background without a lot of personality, to write on it, floor, left, back. So I know this is my favorite use of it right here. So we'll bring this one up. And I think we'll put it under the weight as well, Curtis, when we're ready. And we're creating a full length set like we would use for a bridal or children. And this way it appears in the final images to be quite seamless. If we were gonna have some little kids running around, we could use more weights or more sandbags on the edges. Let me see if I can get my hands on one at least for the moment. So by putting a weight on each corner, people on it are not gonna mess it up too much. We can shoot um, just about anything in here, uh, maybe up to 10, 12 people full length. As you can see here in the studio, we currently have a tile, a wood-like tile, but it's still a slippery tile. Now in our studio history, which is many, many decades, We've had many kinds of flooring and the flooring could be wood or carpet or concrete, uh, just about anything you can think of. But what worked the very best, if you're getting ready to make a camera room and you're, you're, you're building a studio, you're converting your garage, whatever it is, let me tell you what works best for canvases and for muslin. A commercial carpet will grab this and it won't move. So I would highly recommend looking at putting a, just a very short um, napped carpet down. And then when you put your, when you place a background on it, it doesn't move. What I'd like to show you though today is the other backgrounds that we're using, which are canvas. You need choices that are warm, cool, neutral. We're gonna show you one other thing we do very commonly, and that is to attach small canvases, meaning six by eight or eight by tens, to the existing system that we have, because we're doing headshots and seniors all the time, quick change, even though it's a canvas. So we roll the background down a little bit more, and we take our canvas, boom, get that on there. All right, here, I'll let you clip this so I can hold it for you. All right, and we'll run it up. This background's a favorite. It's called Orchestra. Um, I had it designed by uh, an artist like 25 years ago, maybe a little longer than that. And when it was, became so popular that people wanted to buy it, we needed to give it a name. So because I was shooting orchestra kids with it, I called it orchestra. I probably do thousands of images every year on this background. It comes out beautifully. It has, as you can see, a built-in hotspot, kind of a classical thing, which means it doesn't need to have a hotspot light on it like this. We don't need to make that brighter than it is. So generally you can shoot this 
with the existing setup, which is really, really nice. So this is orchestra. It looks like it is a six by eight and it's good enough for one or two people, but it's a good one. And again, you can get it from David Mayhew. Let's try one more canvas, small canvas, and then we'll show you the big ones. The next one up is a gray, uh, small, I think it's a little bigger. I think it's an eight by 10 background. Very, very useful for everything. It's a, a medium gray with a little bit of a cloudy effect. Uh, very clean on canvas, so it wears really well. And we use it for like all of our corporate headshots unless something special is required. So on this gray, you can do, gee, almost anything, but we often blow it out. In other words, over light it and make it almost white, but it still has some cloudy effect. It can also be very dark. The nice thing about medium tone backgrounds is you can choose to light them more or light them less. And you can just uh, use spotlight. We do use spotlight a lot on this one. And we can put that spot wherever we want it to get the look that works. You know, it also has in the dowel <clears throat> center holes or end holes. So you can put it on stands or put it on a single stand. But we do have a new one that's called Fine Art Gray. I designed that about two years ago with David Mayhew. And it is a big one. It's a one piece, 10 by 20. And so it can roll out all the way and you won't have to be taping anything down. Go low. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, it has kind of the model texture to it. But once again, depending on how you light it, you can make it really dark or medium dark or as it appears to my eye, which is just a, you know, 28% gray or something. But this one's 10 by 20. We can roll it out as much as we need to. And you could do full lengths with no horizon seam at all. Photographs beautifully. A lot of my images that you see on my website are done on this. And because it's the same top and bottom, if you don't need to do full length, you can just roll it down halfway and you get the exact same look. Okay. The next one that we want to show you is actually a muslin background, but we liked it so much and kept having to fold. It's a big one and it takes a lot of effort to keep it from a wrinkled state. So we decided to carefully roll it up on a canvas system and it works really well. So we're gonna show you that one right now. A little more good, okay. I'll kick it in a little bit. This is a lovely background to work with. It's got motion, it's got warm tone, it's got cool tones and I can place my subject in different areas on it. it. It was originally designed by Les Brandt, Les Brandt Backgrounds. I believe it's available nowadays, the design from Shooting Gallery Backgrounds. They're out there somewhere. And they got a lot of Les Brandt's fine designs. A beautiful muslin, but here's the trick. Watch this when we roll it up. Curtis and I will pull at opposite ends of the width to keep it going up squarely without wrinkles. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna roll it up cleanly. That's a lot of great background because even the floor piece is excellent for just a general background we've used for seniors and for other things. So you can roll that one down halfway and have something really nice. So the last one I'm gonna show you is another classic. It's an older background, still readily available to design. I don't know that the version you're gonna get from Denny's or some other place is gonna look as nice as the original artist's was, and that's what we do have. But again, it's called Classic Garden and you can find it or a facsimile of it. So let's take that one down, Curtis. 
It has a beautiful floor. This is wonderful for little children, formal, brides. It is kind of the fancy end of our spectrum, you know. And though it has designs like the balustrade and the flowers, those things are quite subtle. I don't like things that are cartoony and real. So they really record pretty softly, which is nice. And uh, you have to experiment to get the look you want. But this background has a lot of wonderful sweet spots. And this floor is gorgeous. It's just as classic as you can get. And it, it just, the tones render really well. It's so good, in fact, that we had several, several of our posing props that have uh, upholstery, two of them, upholstered to match these greens that are down here. So when the, those pieces come on this background, you got magic. So that, my friends, is just a quick look at some of the backgrounding that we do here like on a regular basis. Uh, every session, we'll get at least two or three of these backgrounds. As, as you saw, we have a lot more uh, muslins available. So if we're doing like a senior boy, we might be looking for something a little different, a little bold, a little graphic. But most of the time, I prefer, prefer the subtle ones. And we have plenty of them in lots of different shades, different colors. And then of course we have a series of classics to use too. So if you have uh, a startup situation and you're going to get, you're gonna get your first background, let's say you're just using paper right now, gray paper, black paper, white paper, um, that's great. But that's really largely commercial. If you're going to get your first background, I would get something that's soft-spoken, like my beige is, and in a medium tone, so that you can make it lighter or darker with your lighting and your subject distance from the background. It's very, they're easy to use, very forgiving, and you have lots of choices. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed our visit today in the camera room with our background collection, so you could just get a taste of what we have in the arsenal to be able to create the portraits we do. I pick backgrounds, believe it or not, based on what clothing is in front of me. So it forces me high key, skin tone and lighter, or low key, skin tone and darker. So I pick backgrounds based on the subject matter and most especially their attire. And I do have some other older videos uh, when I was much younger on the channel that you can seek out and see also a lot more of these tips. Thank you again for uh, being with us today. Please subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you very much.